911, where's your emergency? Oh my gosh, there's a car wreck. What's your location? Uh, there, there's somebody laying on the hood of this car. Ma'am, I need you to calm down and tell me where's your location so I can get my units to you. I, I'm in front of Fountain Central High School. How many How many vehicles? There, There's two vehicles. There. Can you see anybody that is injured? There's somebody laying on the hood of this car. There's a girl walking around. Okay, hang on, ma'am. I'm, I'm going to pause. I need you to stay right there with me so I can get my units to you. Fountain County Units EMS Fire, stand by for dispatch. Fountain County Units EMS Fire, respond to in front of Fountain Central High School, 1050 PI, two vehicles, unknown injuries, possible one ejected, one walking around. Fountain County Units EMS Fire, respond to Fountain Central High School, 1050 PI, two vehicles, unknown injuries, one subject ejected, one walking around. Ma'am, I need to stay on the line with me. I need more information from you. Okay, you got a laceration to the head, okay. Adam! I got a head laceration! I got one more! Okay, I'm gonna run you through a few field sobriety tests, okay? What I need you to do, okay? Can you see the tip of my pen? Okay, reach out and touch your finger. With the tip of your finger, touch the tip of my pen, please. Okay, with your eyes and your eyes only, follow this pen, okay? one you use okay I need you to hold it six inches above the ground and parallel to the ground okay and then count 1001 1002 until I tell you to stop you understand that okay go ahead no I tell you to stop Okay, sir, I'm going to offer you a portable breath test, okay? Stay right here with this officer. What that is, is it's an instrument that just lets me know how much you've had to drink, okay? Okay. As you can see, it's going to zero itself out, okay? In a hair in a minute, it's going to tell you to blow, okay? At that point, I need you to take a deep breath and blow until I tell you to stop, okay? Take a deep breath, blow. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Got it. All right. Can you down, 
Please. Get the side rail out for me, guys. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna read you this, okay? Sure. Okay, this is the Indiana implied consent, okay? I have probable cause to believe that you have operated a vehicle while intoxicated. I must now offer to you the opportunity to submit to a chemical test and inform you that your refusal to submit to a chemical test will result in the suspension of your driving privileges for one year. Will you take the chemical test, sir? Okay. At this time, you're going to be placed, you're going to be detained until we get back to the data master, which is at the jail, okay? okay. Go ahead and turn around, put your hands behind your back for me, sir. You don't have anything on your guns, knives, anything like that to the harm bird or me, do you? Okay. Cut halfway up, check actually if you want to check on the sounds you can, I'll go ahead and start cutting or close off here. chemically sedated. Right. This is Molly. She has had 170 of sucks, 170 of ketamine uh, because of snoring respirations. She was conscious and alert whenever we got there. Uh, she had snoring respirations. We went and took over. Head injuries, all that we can see. We've checked from head to toe there. You've got bilateral 14s. She has had, okay, whenever you guys are ready. ready can I t uh, find out what happened? Uh, Head-on collision with a drunk driver. Uh, there was a 10-0 in the same compartment that she was okay. in um, with ejection. <laughs> yeah, bilateral 14s, less blood pressure, 90 over 40, sinus spray at 48. Was she driver? She was the driver. Seatbelt? Uh, yes, seatbelt. Airbags? Passenger was ejected and was deceased on the scene. Airbags did deploy. No bruising? No bruising in the abdomen, everything else looked fine. Whenever she was alert at the scene, she complained of nothing but facial pain. And you do have the, I, I've counted four lacerations to the face. You we'll draw a full trauma panel, hand scan. Chest x-ray before she goes anywhere. 
that's that ultrasound. Yeah. This is mom. Does she have any medical problems? Do you know, has she taken any medication today? Any chance she's pregnant? To ask. Okay. Allergies to medicine. Okay. Dr. Barr, is there anything else you need to me? I do not think so. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mama's here, baby. You're not by yourself anymore. The doctor's going to use this to take a look at her belly. Can I ask you to step out with one of the officers here just to the chapel around the corner? Mutz, if you'll step out for me, please. Watch your step. Straight up there to the door with the star on it, please. I need you to take a deep breath, make a tight seal, and blow till I tell you to stop, okay? All right. Take a deep breath. Blow. Keep going, 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 got it. So I'm Dr. Byers. What do you know happened today? She was in an accident, somebody hit her head on. I know you just saw her there just now, and then the ultrasound that we did was looking at her heart, looking at her abdomen, and it shows there's a lot of bleeding in her abdomen, and her heart has stopped. We weren't able to get it to restart, so I'm sorry to tell you that she has died here today. I was just with her. Yeah, just with her. I understand. Yep. It sounds like it was a pretty severe accident. Well, you got to work on her. What's that? You got to work on her. I don't think there's anything else that we can do here today. We've done it all. So I'm Deputy Coroner Howard, Fountain County Coroner's Office. Okay, that's kind of why I'm sitting here. So, Dr. Byrus has told you that she's died in a result of the, the drunk driving accident today. Um, I know this is very hard news for you to hear. Um, it's not very easy to tell, tell a parent that, it, it, you know, their son or daughter has died. So, we are here for anything that you need. Um, you just need to let us know, okay? Okay, Mr. Butts, at this time, you're going to be placed under arrest for operating a vehicle while intoxicated. Okay, your result was a .09, which you know what the legal limit in the state of Indiana is? .08. Okay, so you were just above it. Okay, just barely above it. And you said you had how many beers? One or two. One or two? Okay, all right. All right, sit right tight. We're going to go through the bookend process here in just a minute, okay? So just sit right tight for me. One's going to be OVWI causing death. Count two, OVWI causing death. Uh, operating a vehicle while intoxicated, endangering a person, and over or operating a vehicle with an ace of .08 or above. Got that? Okay. All right. We're taking that to the bedside. You like this here? That car take you back. Okay. No. Don't have a seat. 
get in there for me, please? Up, up. There you go. Watch your head when you get in. All righty. you of your rights. One of the rights you have is the right to be represented by an attorney. If you don't have the money or means to hire your own attorney, the court would appoint one for your public expense. Uh, Mr. Butts, you'll see seated beside you uh, defense counsel Craig Jones. Given the nature of the offense and your age, the court has taken the liberty of appointing counsel for you at this point. Do you understand? Is that a yes? Yeah. You're in a courtroom, Mr. Butts. We're recording this, and I need a yes or no out of you. Do you understand? Mr. Jones, on behalf of your client, are you <coughs> requesting that the court enter a plea of guilty or not guilty? I believe, Your Honor, we've had an opportunity to discuss a plea agreement we would like to enter pursuant to that agreement, plea of guilty. I'm going to read the charges to you. I'll ask you how you wish to plead. If you wish to plead guilty, indicate the same. <coughs> Raise your right hand, Mr. Butch. Do you swear and affirm under the pains and penalties of perjury the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God or as you otherwise may affirm? I swear. Sir, you've been charged in count one with causing death when operating a motor vehicle with an alcohol concentration of .08 or more as a level five felony, and it reads as follows. The undersigned says that on or about April 29th, 2019, at eastbound U.S. Highway 136 near Fountain Central High School in Fountain County, state of Indiana, Nathaniel A. P. Butts did operate a motor vehicle with an alcohol concentration equivalent to at least 0.08 gram, well, grams of alcohol per <coughs> two 10 liters of said defendant's breath, resulting in the death of Brendan Riley contrary to the form of the statutes in such cases made and provided by Indiana Code 9-30-5-5A1 against the peace and dignity of the state of Indiana, and that's affirmed under the penalties of perjury by prosecuting attorney Daniel Askren. Do you understand the charge, Mr. Butts? Yes. Do you wish to plead guilty or not guilty? Guilty. You've been charged in count two with causing death when operating a motor vehicle with an alcohol concentration equivalent of .08 or more as a level five felony, and it reads as follows. The undersigned says that on or about April 29, 2019, at eastbound U.S. Highway 136, near Fountain Central High School in Fountain County, state of Indiana, Nathaniel A. P. Butts did operate a motor vehicle with an alcohol concentration equivalent to at least 800 gram of alcohol per two 10 liters of said defendant's breath, resulting in the death of Molly French, contrary to the form of the statutes in such cases made and provided by Indiana Code 9-30-55A1 against the peace and dignity of the state of Indiana, and that's affirmed under the penalties of perjury by prosecuting attorney Daniel Askren. Do you understand the charge, sir? Yes. How do you wish to plead? Guilty. Mr. Jones? And Ms. Guerin, uh, you're the mother of Brendan Riley, correct? Yes. And we're here today for the sentencing of Mr. Butts? Yes. And it's my understanding you have a statement that you'd like to make, correct? Yes. Please, please proceed. I hope that justice gives you time to 
acknowledge your consequences for your actions. I hope that during that time you can choose to make better choices in your life ongoing because at the end of the day I don't get my son back. I don't get to tell him how much I love him or how much I miss him or give him a hug or spend time with him and neither does my family anymore. I won't get to see him graduate. I won't get to see him go to prom next weekend. I don't get to see him go to IU or graduate there or have a family later on in life. I feel like there's a big piece of me that was taken away by the accident and the choices that you made on that day. Thank you. Out of the pains and penalties of perjury, the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll be God the noise man for Yes. Please state your name. Dawn French. And Ms. French, you're the mother of Molly French, and you're here today to make a statement um, prior to the sentencing of Mr. Bus. Please proceed. Well, nothing I know. I'm really disappointed. We, you've spent a lot of time at our house. And we've had a lot of parties and bonfires. And I didn't think you would do something like this. So, I, um, I'm mad at you, <coughs> but I'm mad at you. You took my little girl from us. So I hope that you learn your lesson. Jump in the game. Not from the state, Your Honor. <coughs> French, can you tell us, does Molly have any uh, siblings? Yes. And how old are they? Um, she has a sister that's 24 and a brother that's 21. And Molly was a senior? Yes. And what did she intend to do after graduation? She was going to go to Purdue for um, teaching. Had she been accepted? Yes. So she's your youngest child? Yes. I appreciate your willingness to get up and speak with the court today. Thank you. If you would state your name, please, ma'am. Abby Smith. I understand you are Mr. Butts' father. Yes. And I understand you would like to make a statement on behalf of your son. Yes. Please. Your Honor. My deepest sympathies to the French and Ratley families. I am truly and deeply sorry on behalf of my family. Where do I begin? My baby. My little boy, my son. Because of this one tragic mistake, his life is now changed forever. Let me begin by saying, I know this is a mistake that he will forever think about. And if he had one wish, he would take it all back. As his mother, I have watched him grow into a strong, intelligent, handsome man who wouldn't purpose, purposely hurt a friend. He wears his heart on his sleeve and would do anything for family, friends, and strangers. When his father and I go out to eat or go to school function, there is not one time that we are not approached by someone that praises Nathaniel and how great of a friend he is to their child, how respectful he is, or just the helpful hand that he has given someone. Not only is it the community that looks up to Nathaniel, but his sisters and brought to his sisters and brother, he is their hero. He is a saint in their eyes. I'd like to read a letter that his middle sister wrote in January. She's in second grade. About my amazing brother. My brother is cool. He plays basketball and football. I think he is the best at playing. His favorite one is basketball. My brother is the quarterback for football. His number for basketball is three. For football, his number is 18. My brother's name is Nathaniel Butts. I think he is amazing. I wonder what people think about him. He is 18 and his birthday is on Christmas. He is fast. He's on the Mustang Fountain Central basketball team and football team. He is really talented. 
He is the best brother ever. As I stand here now and look at what his future may be and not what it should be on Moss, Nathaniel is not a partier. He's not a drinker. I don't know the thought process that he would think that it would be okay to drink and drive. Nathaniel had a bright future planned. He was planning on a, he was planning on attending Wabash in the fall, which was the beginning of him becoming a great attorney. And sadly now, instead of him being an attorney, he needs an attorney. He had plans to be a great husband, a great father, and a great uncle. Now he will forever mourn the loss of two great friends. I ask your honor that you allow him to build and work every day in their honor. <clears throat> I know that it may be a lot to ask, but I know that Nathaniel is not taking any of this in vain. I know your honor, he will work hard and that if he works on, he will make sure that it will be in honor of Molly and Brendan every day. We've had so many deaths in our community generation after generation after generation. And I know from experience that your school and all of the administrators at the school have programs out there that have tried to alert you as to what could happen if you, regardless of your age, if you get behind the wheel and drink and drive. There is no age that you should do that. And I look at uh, Ms. Guerin and Ms. French and the families out here today, and I have no words whatsoever that can make them feel any better when they lay their head down tonight. I can't bring their children back. I can't uh, help them through that birthday that they're going to have or that graduation or prom this weekend when they're on social media and they see all of the, the prom pictures from all of the other kids that, that their children went to school with, going and having fun and the, the hurt that it's gonna put in their heart. There is nothing that this court can do to make that right. Their lives are changed forever, and your life is changed forever. And that's the situation that every single person could be in. They could be you. We've asked all of you young people to think about that. No, you're not a partier. No, you're not a drinker. But you drank, and there were consequences. And now I have to look at these moms and these dads and tell them, I'm sorry, just like you did. And I'm sorry that this court can't make it right for you. I can't give them their children back and I can't give you better choices to make at the beginning of today. You've made this choice and there are consequences for every single choice that we make. Nobody thinks they're gonna be the one that gets pulled over. Nobody thinks they're gonna be the one that ends up in a ditch. Nobody thinks when they drink one or two beers that they're going to be the one that is in the accident that kills those people and yet, Time after time after time, we have it happen. You know other people that have been in these accidents. I know you do, because I know those same people in our community that have lost children, that have lost friends. We see those crosses on the side of the road, and we're all aware of who they stand for, and now we can't bring them back. The court agrees with Mr. Jones that any sentence that this court would hand down is meant to be reformative, not putative. But nevertheless, there are consequences. For your actions, and the court will enter a judgment of conviction. I think I said that previously. For the conviction on count one, the court will sentence you to four years in the Indiana Department of Corrections. On count two, Court will enter that judgment of conviction as a level five felony, sentence you to four years in the Indiana Department of Corrections with said sentences to be consecutive. Do you understand what consecutive means, Mr. Butts? One after the other. One after the other, that's not at the same time. That means you have eight years in the Indiana Department of Corrections. How old will you be, Mr. Butts, in eight years? 26. 26 years old, do you understand that? Yes. Court will suspend one year of each sentence for a total uh, sentence to be served in the amount of six years in the Indiana Department of Corrections. Court will place you on probation for the remaining two years.
terms and conditions to be set by probation, but to include, you will immediately forthwith write a letter of apology to the family of Molly French. You will immediately uh, write a letter of ap apology to Brendan's family. You will like, write a letter of apology to your family, particularly to your sister. Do you understand, Mr. Butts? Yes. Do you accept those terms? Yes. The court would advise you if you violate any of the conditions of probation during the probationary period, the court may revoke, modify, or extend your probation, and a petition to revoke may be filed before the earlier one year after termination or within 45 days. Do you understand and accept these terms? Yes. The sheriff is ordered to carry out the sentence forthwith. Lines, 17 of Hillsboro, Indiana, was killed Monday, April 29th, 2019, when she was riding in a car that was hit by a drunk driver. Kyle William, William Mullady of Fountain County was killed Monday, April 29th, 2019, when the car he was riding in was struck by a texting driver. Logan Weldon of Petersburg was killed Monday, April 29th, 2019, when a car she was riding in struck by a driver that was texting. David Kite, 41, of Carpersville, Indiana, was killed Monday, April 29, 2019, when the car he was riding in was hit by a drunk driver. Mr. Kite was a teacher at Fountain Central Junior Senior High School. He was active in coaching boy and girls high school basketball for 11 years, and also coaching boys and girls tennis at Fountain Central for 19 years. Mr. Kite was a big fan of IU, the Cubs, and the Bears. He enjoyed being with friends and family, especially his daughter. He was born May 3, 1978, He's survived by his parents, Jim and Bonnie Kite. He's also survived by his young daughter, Ansley. He's preceded in death by maternal grandparents, John and Louise Russell, and paternal grandparents, Gio and Lola Strong. In lieu of flowers, contributions may be made to Southeast Fountain Community Foundation. Services are pending at Moss Funeral Home. Alexis Griffin, 17, of Kingman, Indiana, was killed Monday, November, April 29, 2019, when she was riding in a car that was hit by a drunk driver. Peyton Kraut, 16, of Petersburg, Indiana, was killed Monday, April 29, 2019, when she was riding in a car that was hit by a drunk driver. Jacob Rice of Hillsboro was killed Monday, April 29, 2019, when the car he was riding in was hit by a drunk driver. 